Hello and welcome to another episode of my Productivity Mastery Series. My name is Carl Pauline and today I am answering a question that I was asked earlier this week and that is if I were to teach somebody who wanted to learn right from the very beginning about productivity, where would I start? And I gave that quite a bit of thought this week and I realised there's actually only one place that we can start if we want to improve productivity and time management because the two kind of go together and that is the calendar. Now I don't really believe in the hustle culture so to speak. I don't believe that we should be work, 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 work. After all work is actually only about 25% of our complete week. What are we doing in the other 75%? And I believe that the other 75% is actually far more important than the 25% related to work. The reason being is that 75% is your life. Your life to do with whatever you decide to do. But we do need to make sure that we have some structures in place. And that's what I want to share with you today. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the calendar and how to set that up so that you can build a productive, fulfilled life for yourself. Now, before we go any further, I would just like to say if you do get any value from this video, then please help me by clicking on that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using productivity tools, then please subscribe to my channel. Okay. Let's go off and start in a calendar exactly how to get yourself better with time management. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to set up a blank calendar. Now, I've done that here with my old demo, actually not my old, but my demo iCloud account. And essentially, what I've done is I've created a number of one-hour blocks uh, for activities that I want to make sure I've got time for each week. Now, I want to be doing my morning routines every day. I want to have some quality time with my family every day. I need time to do my weekly planning each week. I put in a departmental meeting, which could be an example of something that you have as a recurring task. Uh, I need, and we all need, focus time each day or certainly an ex a certain amount of focus time each week in order to do our core work, which if you don't know about, there is a link to that video in the show notes. We need communication time. This is where we deal with the Slack messages and the emails, and that's something that is just a part of life. You're going to get email you, these days. You're going to get Teams and Slack messages. You cannot avoid them, so don't stick your head in the sand and hope that they will go away. They won't go away. So we need to make sure we've got time scheduled each day for dealing with that. Now, I like to take my dog for a walk with my wife, so we both take him for a walk at the end of the day. Now it's in the summer. Although it's cooling down here, we might be able to start taking him out at lunchtime. For me personally, I need time to exercise each day, and I like to have, on a, particularly on a Saturday night, I like to do my TV time. I will schedule it. Closing time, down time, we'll come to it in a moment, but it's a very important part of the day. And as a client meetings or whatever meetings that ad hoc meetings that you will have, and hobby time. Remember those? Having some time to work on a hobby of some sort? Well, we're going to look at building that into your week. So let's start with the most important one, which to me is your morning routines. Something we just have to do. I'm going to drag this over to my Monday. Now, I don't need an hour for morning routines. I just need 45 minutes, which is my time. So I'm going to change this to uh, uh, 8 so I will do my morning routines from 7.30 in the morning, which is my ideal time, to 8.15. That's my ideal time for morning routines. I'm going to repeat that every day. That's just a non-negotiable part of my day. It's going to be at the time that I start my day, which is going to be 7.30 in the morning. I wake up and I begin my morning routines. Now, let's just say for argument's sake that for family time, I want to have breakfast with my family every morning. So we're going to drag this one into the mix and we're going to do from 8.30, because I want to have a little gap just in case, just to gather the family together. We're going to have a 30-minute um, 
a breakfast meeting every morning with the family. So that's, again, it's going to be every day and I'm going to set that one up. So there we go. So now I've got my morning set up. So I've got my morning routines, which is just a non-negotiable part of my day. And then we have family breakfast from 8.30 to 9 a.m. Now you may start your day earlier. I know some people who like to wait to start the day at six. I've got other people who like to start the day at 10. It doesn't really matter what time you start the day. This is just for example of how you can build a well-managed week. Now, weekly planning is something that you would just do once a week. Now, in my case, I'm going to be doing that every Saturday. I do that every Saturday morning and I will do it immediately after we've had breakfast. And it is an hour long because this is I do other things as well. But essentially, I like an hour to do my weekly plan. So I'm going to be doing that every week. And that's now set up. That's done on a Saturday morning. Now, let's look at these, these kind of work-related tasks. Now, let's just say, for argument's sake, every Monday morning at 10 a.m., we have a departmental meeting. It's not, it just happens. So it's going to be something that I will do every single week. So that's going to be set up as a recurring event. And I think because of uh, it's not going to let me set this up as a date, as a repeating event, but just say for a gap, that is something that has to happen at 10 a.m. every single week. So that's in the calendar. Now it's done. Now, this one here, focus time is an interesting one because focus time is something that you might not be able to do every single day. But what I do is let's just say, okay, I know at 10 a.m. I've got a departmental meeting. I start my work at 9. So what I'm going to do is at 9.30, I'm going to give myself a two-hour block for focused time. Now, because of the meeting on Monday morning, I don't have time to do it then. But what I am going to do is I know that I can do it also on a Wednesday morning and I can do it on a Thursday morning. So I get three hour three two-hour blocks for doing focused work. This is where I would be turning my phone off, email off, and for two hours I will be basically incommunicado because I need to get on with the work that I'm paid to do. Now you can argue with me and you can say my boss doesn't like it if I turn my phone off, my clients don't like it if I'm not available to them as soon as they call. Well, that's your decision. But remember, when you allow those distractions to come into your life, you can't serve your boss or your customers because you're not doing the work they're asking you to do. You're talking to them on the phone. You're answering the phone. That is a whole different ball game. But we need to be looking at where we can put in time each day. So another one that I will often do with my focus blocks, if, if say, for example, I've got meetings on Tuesday, I will move this off to something else. I might say, OK, I'm going to do that 1 p.m. on Monday because I've got client meetings on this day. So maybe I've got a client meeting at 9.30. Uh, I've got a client meeting at, uh, let's just say, 11. <clears throat> I've got client meetings I could keep just doing all these. I got a client meeting there and I got a client meeting, say, here. So basically, this is not giving me any time on Tuesday to do any kind of uh, focus work. And that's okay. I'm just going to move that off. I'm just going to try and build focus blocked times in so that I can get my core work done. Okay, next up is communication time. Now, this is one of those things where we can say, oh, I don't have time to do all this. Well, the thing is, emails, Slack messages and Teams messages, they're just a fact of life. They're going to come in. What I would normally do, and this is what I actually do in my own life, is I have an hour of communication time every day. I just know it's going to happen. I know I need to do it. So this is going to get repeated every Monday to Friday. So I'm just going to make sure that that is set up and I have my communication time. It's a non-negotiable part of my day because it just has to be done. I can't magically disappear email. It comes in every day. I get between 80 and 120 emails a day. I can't just stick my head in the sand and ignore them. They need dealing with. So I need time to do that each day. So I fix that into my calendar. 
Let's have a look here. Louis walking time. Well, that's a family event. That's something that I do with my, fam with my wife every day. We take the dog for a walk. So actually, this is something that gets done every day, seven days a week. So this just gets repeated every single day. Louis gets his walk every day. Now, when the winter comes, we normally try and take him in the afternoon, but we're still kind of in the summer here. So I'm going to make sure that I've got my time to take Louis for his walk. Now, exercise. To me, it's a seven-day event thing. I do it every single day. Perhaps you don't want to be doing exercise that often, but the question is how frequently do you want to do exercise? So let's just say that you like to go and do exercise three times a week. So let's copy that and we're going to get it into... What are we doing? <laughs> we're going to copy this. Right. So we're going to move that off to Wednesday and we'll move that one on to Friday. If you're going to exercise, you need to schedule it in your calendar. Now, while we're, what am I doing here? Let's just remove that one. So, hobby time. Now, yeah, a lot of people have forgotten about hobbies, but they're a great way for unwinding at the end of a day. It also helps you to take your mind off work-related matters. Now, perhaps you want to do hobbies on a Sunday morning. So, let's just move on to here. Maybe we want to do it on a Sunday morning. We'll do it from, say, 11.30. And I want to spend four hours doing my, or whatever, to do my hobby time. That's great. Get it in your calendar. TV time. Now, for me, Saturday night is TV time. And I would always put that in there. You can put TV time whenever you want to do it. I like to actually have time to do it. Because if I don't, I will actually spend my day working. And finally, the closing down time. Now, this actually is not an hour. We don't need an hour for this. Uh, but it does, it does, you do need to spend some time doing it each day. I say it's the 30 minute thing. I'm going to make sure that I do that. I actually do mine at 10 30. Uh, but you might decide, no, I'm going to, when I get back from my exercise, let's say um, from 8 30 every day, I'm going to do my closing down time. Closing down, by the way, means that it's something that you just do every day. It's just deciding what are you going to do tomorrow and cleaning up what you've collected today. Now, one more thing. What you might find once you've done this is you'll have some overlap like I have with TV time. With this one, actually, I do this at 10 p.m. and I will just move that there. I'm only going to move that for this event. So that's it. So now that's essentially how you build a well-managed week. It's basically the essence of time management. What do you want time for? That's You can't change time. You know, this part here is fixed. We can't change time. What we can change, though, is the activity that we do within that time. So the only question you have to answer is, what do you want to do during those times. Now, looking at my calendar like this, you can see now that there's plenty of gaps. I've got plenty of gaps on a Saturday. And it could be that my wife says, let's take the dog for a hike. Let's go to a mountain, take the dog out for a mountain. So I can then change that and we can say, OK, from 11 a.m. until 6 or 4 p.m., we are doing a hike and it's family time. So I'm building balance into my week. But as you can see here, when you look at the whole thing, work is not your whole life. It's actually on a day to day basis. It's a third of your life on a weekly basis. When you bring the weekends in, it's actually only 25 percent of your life. So this is an important part during this time but it isn't your whole life. And this is what we're looking at when we're building better time management habits. Start with your calendar. What do you want time to do each week? Get it fixed, get it put in your calendar, and then make sure that what goes on your calendar gets done. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use easy to maintain so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. 
it's going to change your whole belief system about way the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when when you are going to do the task and let's be honest it doesn't matter how motivated inspired or how urgent something is if you don't have time to do it it is never going to get done and that's what this system is built around getting your work done so you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.